Trolls World Tour just released last month. The film made history and headlines with everyone from the Wall Street Journal to Screen Crush reporting on the runaway hit sequel to 2016's Trolls. The singing, dancing, hilarious trolls in both films are based on troll dolls like these, designed by Danish artist Thomas Dom. This is the Good Luck Trolls edition of Where's the Fun From? Art is a funny thing. When it's bad, it's just bad. But when it's really bad, it starts to look good. As it is with art, so it is with the haute couture of dolls, the good luck troll doll. As the originator Thomas Dom once put it, they were so ugly that when you looked at them, you couldn't help but laugh. And when you laugh, luck follows you. And therein lies their magic. So homely and yet so cute. Thomas Dahl made his trolls homely, but Nordic tradition made them horrible. Gigantic, mean, and flesh-eating aren't the typical adjectives used in describing trolls today. But that's the way trolls came into the old world. As the stories evolved, trolls lost their great size and strength, but not their malicious behavior. Only sunlight or hearing their own name, as in the story of Rumpelstiltskin, could kill a troll. Over time, trolls achieved a more benign reputation, and eventually, they went from being not just good, but good luck. In Denmark, troll figurines are still a common sight in gift shops across the country. Stroke the hair of a troll, and you'll have a stroke of good luck come your way. The troll dolls that took the world by storm in the 1960s were originated by Thomas Dom, a former fisherman, bricklayer, and baker who loved to carve wooden figurines by the fireplace at night. When World War II forced his bakery into bankruptcy, it was his wife Betty who convinced him that maybe selling the figurines that he was carving would change the family's luck. Dom traveled from his hometown of Joel, a fishing village in northern Denmark, to the nearest city, Alborg, and began selling his hand-carved wooden trolls door to door. Word got out about this talented sculptor, and soon Dom was hired by a local owner of an amusement park who wanted to make giant trolls out of rubber. Next, a department store in Sweden hired Dom to create a two-story Santa figure for their Christmas display. That got people talking. A local shop owner asked Thomas to make him a life-size Santa. And if you're gonna have Santa in your store, of course you need elves. Thomas figured out a really clever way to make a window display featuring his little elves. He made the hands and the face out of rubber, but their bodies were a mattress spring that was hidden by some clothes and attached to a plank. He had a row of elves on this plank, and the clever thing was he figured out a mechanism that would turn slowly and drop the plank, and the elves would wobble, and then it would lift the plank again and drop it. Well, the store display worked too well because the shop owner had all these people coming into the shop wanting to buy the display. He asked Thomas to make some figurines that he could sell, and the savvy sculptor was well on his way. In 1957, he began making rubber trolls stuffed with wood shavings instead of springs. Working in rubber was not ideal because over time the rubber would dry out and become brittle. This early rubber troll is on his last leg and his last arm. In 1961, the company began experimenting in making the trolls in PVC plastic. Here's an example of an early plastic troll that was also stuffed with wood shavings. He has Dom Lichen Troll, which translates to Dom Happiness Troll, molded into his foot, marking the beginning of Dom marking the soles of his trolls. Dom's creations were bow-legged and pot-bellied. Their arms were spread open, offering a hug, with hands that each ended in four stubby little fingers. They had wide heads and a toothless smile. Their pointy ears were huge, and their deer-in-the-headlights eyes stared longingly. But let's face it, the most memorable element of these dolls was their hair. The Dom Troll's unforgettable hair was called mohair, but it actually was dyed sheepskin. 1964 marked the peak year of the troll craze in the U.S. with a million dolls sold. That year, Dom's company, Dom Things Establishment, bought the entire harvest of sheepskin from Iceland 
and they still couldn't make the Dom things fast enough. Part of the Dom Troll's odd appeal was the fact that Americans pronounced his last name Dam. And as with any fad or craze, there's bound to be repercussions, or in this case cussing, <laughs> from people who don't quite get all the hoopla, as in those <laughs> hula hoops are everywhere. Toy stores in the US jumped on this and ads that read, if you don't give a darn, give a damn. Damn troll, that is. You're a damn doll, Irving. And come meet the whole damn family. In 1965, Royalty Designs of Florida, the company distributing the troll dolls in the U.S., even resorted to calling them Damn It Trolls. At the height of the troll craze, they seemed to be everywhere. There were pencil toppers, carrying cases for your collection, a book. A leather company even made a troll belt with a holster for your favorite troll. Articles from all across the nation told of the troll invasion. By 1964, scores of imitators and even counterfeits entered the market. There was a lawsuit against the company making trolls called Lucky Snooks. By the early 1970s, the market was so flooded with trolls that the sales of the Dom trolls was just a fraction of what they were in the early 60s to mid-60s. In 1989, Thomas Dom died of cancer, and he didn't live to see his trolls once again ascend to the top of the toy world. In the early 1990s, more troll dolls were shipped in the U.S. than the entire craze of the 60s, over $2 billion worth at retail in 1991 and 1992 alone. Only a fraction of those sales were officially Dom Trolls, licensed this time as Norfin Trolls. Other competitors from the 1990s included, are you ready for this? Rust Trolls, Magic Trolls, Treasure Trolls, Trollkins, Fairy Tale Trolls, Monster Trolls, and Battle Trolls. Another big change came in the form of the Trolls' famous hair. In the 1990s, Trolls began to sport their ultra-bright, ultra-awesome rainbow-colored hair. A change in the copyright law in 1996 allowed Dom Thing's establishment to regain the rights to the troll dolls. And that same year, they licensed them out to Playmates Toys, who released them as Totally Troll. In 2011, Dom Thing's announced a partnership with DreamWorks Animation. And in 2016, Trolls the Movie was released, grossing $344 million. To keep the movie in the minds of consumers and tease the coming sequel, the Trolls made an appearance in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 2018, proving once and for all, you just can't keep a good luck troll down. Today, the collector's market for trolls is as hot as ever, and you can even get an upcycled vintage troll hand-painted with love. As the sequel's revenue continues to climb, and the troll dolls get ready for another resurgence, because you know every 30 years it's bound to happen. I wonder what Thomas Dom would say about all this. His clever little trolls have certainly traveled a long way from a tiny fishing village in northern Denmark to worldwide domination. I have a feeling he wouldn't say anything. He'd just laugh as he sat by the fire whittling, because you know when you laugh, good luck follows you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for a new video every Saturday. I'm going to go get a haircut. Have a great week and seize the play.